So what is a future cryptocurrency? If you've been paying attention, you've noticed that the market has been quite volatile for the last couple of weeks. Uh, roughly about, let's say 20 to $30 billion has left the cryptocurrency, uh, let's say marketplace. So it's roughly around $70 billion right now. But as of today, it's a little bit uptick. And the whole premise of this video is I wanna quickly summarize my thoughts about the space currently and where I see the space going on in the future. I get emails every day from amazing entrepreneurs, from amazing people who are very gung-ho of entering the space and they feel like they're missing out. They feel like they're not getting their piece of the pie or they feel like they've missed this golden opportunity to enter the crypto space uh, because it's only gonna be for a short period of time that this is gonna be available to most individuals. You know what, you know what I tell them? I tell them they're completely wrong. My belief system, based on me being in the industry, talking with people, and just sheer facts, is we are a long, long way for cryptocurrencies actually getting mass adoption. And there's a couple of reasons why. Reason number one is the technology itself is not scalable yet. Bitcoin's not scalable. You see what's going on with SegWit. You see what's happening with their scalability issues for the last couple of years. Um, they cannot handle millions of users. Ethereum is the same boat. They're trying to do that with Casper, with Proof of Stake, but that's quite a bit away, and we still don't know exactly how that's gonna actually function in mainnet, in the real world. Um, it looks great theoretical on paper, but let's apply that in the real world. Number two, sheer talent. So this is what Block Geeks does. We train developers. There's not enough talented people in the space. We need more engineers. We need more people who specialize in crypto economics. We need more developers. We need more talented, amazing people to enter this space and to offer value and to support the ecosystem. If you, go ask any, let's say, DAP or ICO that's raised money. They're all having the same problem. They can't find talented people. This is why Google goes around the world and finds amazing people to bring back to Silicon Valley. And finally, number three is, it's quite simple, the timing. I truly believe that, yes, when Bitcoin came out in 2008, the timing was perfect, but what I mean by timing for this point is global timing. So if you walk on the street and you talk to anybody about Bitcoin or Ethereum, maybe one out of 10 people may know what Bitcoin is, but I guarantee zero out of 10 people will know what Ethereum is. So the actual marketplace is not aware of it and they're not ready for this adoption. For example, in North America, e-commerce purchases on the phone is south of 5%. When you go to China, it's north of 75% on WeChat. So if the marketplace here in North America is only south of 5% on e-commerce, that tells you a lot when it comes to psychology of buyers over here, psychology of people using online banking. You know, they have a fear, a regular fear of using their phone for online banking. Imagine when it comes to cryptocurrency. So we are in a very, very early phase in this industry. I mean, extremely early and it's still very experimental. Even though Bitcoin's been here for eight years, Ethereum's been here for two years, that's like a blink. It's, it, it's, it's, it's nothing, especially because this isn't just technology. This is actually transforming the paradigm of how you do business. This is transforming the paradigm of how you think. And this is actually transforming the paradigm of nation states and nationality because if money is not trying, tied to a nation, then what's really the point of nations? What is the point of having the Canadian dollar? What is the point of having the US dollar? What is the point of having the Chinese renminbi dollar? So the whole mindset of society is completely transformed with blockchain technology. Uh, so anybody watching this video, it is very early, it's not too late. So I think the future of cryptocurrency is amazing and I think we have a long, long, long way to go before we see huge mass adoption uh, Andres Antonopoulos, I believe a week ago, gave a talk somewhere and uh, someone in the audience asked him, Andreas, when do you think uh, Bitcoin will hit mainstream? His best guess was 20 years from now. That's his best guess. It may be sooner, it might be even later. But the bottom line is where we are right now, we are mad scientists. We are experimenting the space. So if you think you know, you're coming around and you're missing out on the boat, you're not. You're actually one of the, what I like to, uh, coin the phrase lunatics in the space coming very early and you're joining us in this massive global experimental um, experiment, this process of creating new types of crypto currencies, these new types of tokens, new types of, new types of systems of business because business will change. 
And who knows, maybe Bitcoin will disappear next year or maybe it might stay here for the next 100 years. Same thing with Ethereum. I really don't know what the platforms of the futures will be. The best guess that we can say is we can look at in the past, for example, the examples of MySpace and Facebooks, but those are a little bit different. You know, where we're entering is unknown territory where the whole paradigm is completely different. The psychology is completely different. And also the context is completely different because back then the internet was still being built. So we have this now, say, hyperactive platform that things can exponentially grow, which they didn't have back in the day. And communication is more robust, etc. We have just more resources at our disposal than these companies and these startups did back in the day. Um, but so if you're watching this video and you feel, let's say, left out of the party, trust me, you're not left out of the party. There is you're early, early, and my recommendation to you, if you want to get involved, is get involved, buy some cryptocurrencies, invest in some you know, blockchain startups, uh, somehow get involved, start talking to experts. Uh, if you need to talk to experts, if you need to update, your, update yourself on the knowledge, go to Block Geeks. There's a link below this video, or go to our YouTube channel where we interview and do webinars with all the best talented people around the world. But the bottom line is we are very early. If we're looking at like the growth curve of this technology, we're still at the beginning. And yes, somewhere like if we're here, somewhere over here is gonna be that exponential curve where it hockey sticks, but we're very, very far away um, from that uh, particular point in time. Classic example right now is with the dApps on Ethereum. You have certain dApps like Bancor and Status to shut down EVM. Imagine if you're a successful startup on top of Ethereum and you have millions of users, you can't even build a business because Ethereum can't handle that user load. Same thing with Bitcoin. You have, you have all these very protocol layers of blockchain that must be solved right now. And once we solve that, whether that is state channels, stable coins, proof of stake, hybrid versions of proof of stake, um, Bitcoin, SegWit, um, you know, into Lightning Network. Once that is solved, then we can start actually seeing more user adoption where it's almost instantaneous transaction, very, very, very low transaction fees and more of a flawless user experience where in fact, you don't feel like you're even using a blockchain. You're, in fact, you don't even feel like you're using a cryptocurrency. It's just like you're going on a Shopify channel or a shop uh, or, or an Amazon channel and you're buying something, okay? So that summarizes up. The future cryptocurrency is bright and we're in the very, very, very early stages, guys. Peace.